Good afternoon, everyone. This is Michael Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 14th, 2021, recorded on 6.40 p.m. Eastern Time. A lot to talk about today, including the potential for two tropical cyclones to be impacting portions of the United States over the next couple of days, and a look at Tropical Storm Grace that could bring impacts towards the Lesser Antilles, and if it could become a hurricane over the next several days. So let's go ahead and jump straight into everything. Taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this evening, again, we noticed that we still have two systems out there. We are monitoring the remnant circulation of once what was Tropical Storm Fred. Uh, remember, we were talking about Fred yesterday, and it has now moved over parts of Cuba, now re-emerging off the western tip of Cuba here. But this has now opened into a tropical wave once again, but this will likely regenerate as it heads northward for the next couple of days. And this could get uh, awfully close here towards places like Mobile Bay and uh, over towards Pensacola, Florida in the western Florida, Florida panhandle here. And we are also watching newly designated Tropical Storm uh, Grace, which is now over parts of the Lesser Antilles tonight. And the pattern for grace here is going to become very complicated very quick. So we'll, we're going to jump straight into everything here. Looking at Fred first, again, this is a storm that, again, was sitting over the western part of Cuba last night and uh, traversed this area while kind of generally moving westward. And we talked about how uh, there was some complexities in the forecast here because a track more so along Cuba would significantly disrupt uh, the circulation. And in fact, it did so. And uh, we are expecting a circulation to be much more over here by today. But instead, we have a broad circulation over this area. Now, it's not a closed circulation, but there is some hints here at some slight westerly winds. We'll have another recon plane in there shortly to determine the structure here. Uh, but there is some hints at some westerly winds here coming uh, towards the tip of Cuba. Uh, and then you can kind of see this fetch of easterly winds here. So there is a broad circulation within this area. Now, if we jump back here to the water vapor satellite imagery, uh, we can take a look at how this is kind of working here and what is kind of occurring with our storm uh, so if we kind of look here, what we can notice is that we have this upper level low that's been sitting across the Florida Panhandle and Peninsula the last several days. This is now backed towards the west and we have this upper level low sitting here and it's now retrograding northward. And what this is going to do is because this has been creating a lot of southwesterly shear over Fred for the last several days, the shear in turn is going to start relaxing, but it's not going to completely go away. And for the reason for that, we have this kind of upper level ridge that's now setting up, uh, you know, kind of downstream here. And we can kind of tell that, again, we have the cyclonic curvature here. This is indicative here of upper level ridging in the part of the in the upper part of the atmosphere and because of the fact that fred uh is displaced from this uh, circulation what that's going to mean is that again this will create some northerly shear uh, that's going to be impinged on our storm so the shear will never completely go away but it will be lower than what it's been dealing with for the last several days and this will begin to move northward during the overnight hours and over the next few days. And again, could end up here somewhere in the far western Florida panhandle or closer towards Mobile Bay uh, over the next several days. National Hurricane Center currently has this expected to reach 50 miles per hour just upon landfall here somewhere across the western part of the Florida panhandle. If you look how this is going to play out here in the model forecast, this is the 18Z GFS valid for 8 p.m. this afternoon in the 850 millibar vorticity map. So this is the spin in the atmosphere at about 5,000 feet off the ground. And again, what we notice here is that our system here is very diffuse. It's very elongated. There's no well-defined low-level circulation at this time. However, again, our system will be moving northward. And during this time, the hurricane center... Uh, is expecting some sort of well-defined circulation to develop. Now, if we look here again at the upper part of the atmosphere in the 200 millibar wind, we notice this broad upper level low right now across the northern Gulf of Mexico here. 
We also notice that there's this upper level ridging downstream here that it will be impinging some northerly shear on our system for the next several days. Uh, but what ends up happening again is this upper level low uh, that's been sitting here eventually weakens off substantially and allows uh, there to be some type of surface rotation here. And in fact, on the GFS, again, this actually managed to spin up a, a surface circulation and intensify it uh, on approach to landfall again by sometime Monday. So we're really kind of looking at a landfall time somewhere probably from early Monday morning through about Monday afternoon. So this could be a morning slash afternoon event for portions of the Florida Panhandle. And again, on the GFS forecast, we noticed that, again, we'll still be dealing with this upper level anticyclone that's over the Florida Peninsula and over the southwestern coast of Florida. So this would still be pumping around some shear on the back side of this. And again, our storm would be intensifying. It is a little bit stronger here uh, compared to the 12Z runs. So this will be something that we'll have to watch. Again, uh, NHC currently expecting this to reach a maximum sustained wind of about 50 miles per hour. Now, uh, again, if we look here at the relative humidity in the upper part of the atmosphere, again, most of it is going to be really confined here. Uh, on the eastern side of the circulation, you notice that the western side is pretty much dry. The eastern side is going to experience much of the heavy rainfall, kind of the eastern and northern parts, so all the way from South Carolina through even portions of the western Florida uh, peninsula could experience some isolated tornadoes, gusty winds, heavy rainfall, and the potential for some isolated flash flooding problems. So this is not to take lightly, even though this will be a weaker storm and will not in all likelihood be a hurricane, uh, but again, even 50 miles per hour uh, over saturated grounds could cause uh, some trees and power lines to come down, those trees that will come down on the power lines, etc. So there could be some scattered power outages. There could be some trees down. Of course, you know, you want to take, you know, uh, very loose items indoors, etc. So this will be something, uh, but it's not going to be a particularly significant event in terms of the wind, but the rain and the threat for tornadoes, of course, will be a bigger problem as we go forth with time. Now transitioning here to our, our next system here, we'll be looking at Tropical Storm Grace. And we can head over to the infrared satellite loop to kind of give us a better picture of what's going on with our storm. Now today, again, our storm has been kind of disheveled today. Now we did have an earlier burst of centralized convection that could have been considered a central dense overcast. And that was kind of one of the things that we were looking for. But the recon plane that was in there from earlier this afternoon determined that the center location is very hard to find. And we can tell here from the recon plane uh, that, again, there was kind of the semicircle of tropical storm force winds here. And then on the southern side of this, there was actually easterly winds. And you want westerly winds here. And on the wind barbs, these would be looking like that. And instead, you have easterly winds, which are represented by these wind barbs. So with easterly winds here on the southern side, uh, that really was not a, a good sign. And uh, you would want westerly winds here. And this raises the question whether or not this is, in fact, a closed low-level circulation. Now, based on what we had seen from earlier, and uh, we did have some of the passes here, uh, we did kind of see that this was indeed a closed low level circulation, although it be it very broad. And we can kind of take a look at this here. Uh, again, we can kind of take a look at these storm plots, and uh, unfortunately, this doesn't go back as far, but the TFFR uh, site here reported some westerly winds from earlier this afternoon, and this is the storm position as of 2 p.m. Now, this has likely now crossed over, and we now are getting northeast wind here. So this infers that there was some sort of closed circulation that indeed did pass through here at this time. And we can kind of tell that again, uh, now, for the most part, most of the convection is on kind of this side right here. So this infers that there could be a center somewhere within here, but it's very hard to determine, and it's probably very broad and not very well organized. Now, uh, this, again, main convective structure, we'll have to see whether or not this persists. 
It's hard for me to imagine that there's not a closed circulation, given the fact that we've had convection working on this for over 12 hours at this point. Uh, but the Hurricane Center and Recon Plane, again, the, the Reconnaissance Aircraft Mission did not support a uh, closed circulation. This seems to suggest that there was, again, that wind shift. Again, you had westerly winds here flipping to kind of northeasterly winds indicates that there's some broad, probably elongated surface uh, center in there. Now, as we progress with time here, the forecast for Grace is going to become very complicated very quickly. The official track forecast as of 5 o'clock this afternoon uh, did have this tracking mostly over Hispaniola and Cuba, and this would be a prolonged impact event for the islands here. Now, uh, again, given the recent situation in Haiti uh, with the earthquake there and given other situations, this is going to be a, a very bad situation. We already had Fred that kind of came through the same region. And if on this current forecast track that uh, Grace is expected to take, this would be a pretty significant rainfall event, but nothing more than that. Now, the Hurricane Center maintains this as a tropical storm all the way through day five here. Now the cone does once again include the Florida Keys here in the extreme southwestern Florida Peninsula. But a lot of the models today were split. We had a lot of models as of 18Z move south, and we had a lot of models that also were still picking up on a northward trend. Now we can see that again, based on the current trajectory from the National Hurricane Center, the center position did shift south and west as of five o'clock this afternoon, but that's very subject to change. And based on the latest infrared satellite, we could be looking at a surface center here instead of something down in here at this time. So we'll be very curious to see how that ends up playing out. Now we talked about how the situation is going to become very complex very quickly and for reference we'll uh, kind of look at the 18Z GFS for that. So this is the GFS forecast valid as of 0Z tonight, so 8pm. Now the one thing I do want to kind of point out here real quickly is that the GFS does in fact drop a lot of convection which is also one of the reasons why it doesn't develop um, this as strongly as the 12Z guidance. But what we can kind of look at here is so if we move forward in time again, the GFS is much weaker through about hour 30. This is through about uh, 8 p.m. on Monday evening. Of course, we got Fred here regenerating, and then we got a storm south of Puerto Rico. Now, if we look here at the 200 millibar wind in the upper part of the atmosphere, this is when things start to become very, uh, very complicated. What we're going to have is this tropical upper troposphere trough, a tut, uh, that is going to be dipping in here. This upper level trough that's going to be dipping in here, which will be creating some westerly or even northerly shear across our storm uh, by this time it gets to Puerto Rico. Now, one of the things that's going to have to be monitored here is where exactly the storm is and how strong it is at this time. For context here, the 0Z or the 12Z run of the GFS had a much more defined tropical storm here and as such, it was able to kind of push this tut here out of the way and continue to develop a very strong storm moving through kind of the southern part there of Cuba or the northern part of Cuba in north of Hispaniola at this time. And again, if we kind of compare this to the previous run here, this is by 2 a.m. on Tuesday morning. We have a storm that in fact here is, this was the 12Z run. We'll move back here to the 18Z run, the, the latest, and we don't even have a storm here. It's over Hispaniola dying at this time, and there's a much stronger tropical upper tropospheric trough that's dipping in through here. So what this all really means is that, again, the exact positioning and strength is going to matter. Just for quick reference, the stronger the storm gets in the short term, the further north it's going to get. Now, the current Hurricane Center forecast does have this at about 60 miles per hour through about hour 36, which would indicate a pretty strong tropical storm. So we're looking here at about 55 knots or 50 knots or so. However, again, after that time, the intensity forecast and track forecast becomes very uncertain through the next about 48 hours, especially after that. Now, one of the things that's going to be steering the storm in the low levels 
is we have this ridge that's going to be positioned here across portions of Bermuda, just kind of to the east of it. And that's mainly going to keep a storm on a west-northwest heading like this. But if we jump up to the middle part of the atmosphere and we look here at the 500 millibar vorticity, what we can tell here is we have a ridge that's kind of setting up much like this. And for reference, this ridge is kind of oriented more kind of north-south like this and would be pushing a storm kind of more generally towards the west-southwest, which would also create just a little bit of a sheared environment. And again, if we kind of take a look here at the vortex average sounding, we can see that very well. Again, there's changes in the wind flow from kind of, you know, kind of your easterly flow here in the low levels uh, to more kind of your west and southwest here in the middle part of the atmosphere. So this is going to be the one thing we also have some mid-level dry air. Uh, again, the main clue is what's going to happen uh, with this storm by the time it gets to Puerto Rico. So tonight into tomorrow is going to be very crucial for the storm as I think it's going to matter a lot in terms of where the storm ends up and how strong it gets. So for now, the current Hurricane Center forecast has us passing over Hispaniola uh, within the next two days and then moving over all of Cuba basically and then re-emerging, well, maybe what's left of it re-emerging into the southeastern Gulf of Mexico here within the next five days or so. And this is very subject to change uh, because, again, this could end up kind of going north and end up in a more favorable environment out here. It could also split and go south and end up in a favorable environment here or pretty much go in between, which is where the Hurricane Center forecasts is in between the two of the extremities, of the extremities right now. So we'll be watching for that. So, again, have your hurricane preparedness plan ready. Um, and, of course, if you live in Puerto Rico, the, uh, the Keys, Cuba, and the, the Dominican Republic, Hispaniola, and Haiti, this will be something to monitor closely uh, as we progress through the next five days. All right? With that being said, hope you have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.